in the beginning. Somebody say, in the beginning. Um, in the beginning, do you know God had a plan for you in the beginning? He had an idea for you in the beginning. Somebody say, in the beginning. God had a hope for you and a future for you in the beginning. Somebody say, in the beginning. I want you to stop giving up on what God still has for you. Let me start right here. Stop quitting on what God still has for you. God said, I gave you something. I gave you something. Look at your neighbor. Say, he gave me something. He did it in the beginning. In the beginning, God. God created. Now, I want to help you with this because everything that happens between here and verse 26 happens because of verse 26. Does that make sense? Everything that happens between verse 1 and verse 26 happens because of verse 26. Now, I, I, I want to skip down to verse 26, but before we get there, I just want to remind you that God said, I'm going to create light, and I'm going to do it because of verse 26. I'm going to separate the light from the darkness. There's a difference between the light and the darkness. There's, I know it feels like the darkness is winning sometime, but God said it's a difference. 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 I know it feels like if you're doing wrong, you get promoted. If you're doing wrong, you, you get the best. But God said, no, there's a difference. It's a difference. I'm paying attention. The Bible says he created the light. Separate the light from the darkness. Called the light day, the darkness night. Bible says he was two separate waters. He separated the waters, the waters above from the waters below. He did it all because of verse 26. The Bible says he put, he put, he put birds in the air and he put fish in the water. And he did it all because of verse 26. Are y'all with me today? He said he put the creeping things on the ground. Lord have mercy. He put the creeping things on the ground. He put all the creeping things. He put all the creeping things on the ground and he did it all because of verse 26. Then the Bible said on the sixth day, verse 26, he said, then let us make man and make him in our own image and according to our own likeness. You know, you look like God. You be careful who you gave access to. If you knew you look like God. You be careful who you, who you let in your friend group if you knew you look like God. Everybody don't deserve access to me. I look like God. Let them rule over the fish of the sea. Remember the fish I put in the sea? I don't know why I pointed up. The fish in the sea. The birds in the air. <laughs> and over the cattle. And all the creeping things. And all, come on, somebody say all. All the things that creep on the earth. Then God did. What did he do? He created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And he placed them in the garden. And he told them this. Here it is. This is what I want to help you with today. He told them this. Be fruitful. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We love you. Lord, help me help them. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Look at somebody and just yell, be fruitful. Be fruitful. You can have your seat. Amen. Amen. Be fruitful. Right around verse 12. Somebody say verse 12. We're going to go back to verse 12. Let's go back to verse 12 because I want to help you today. Um, I want to talk about friends today, but I can't talk about friends without talking about fruit. Can't talk about friends without talking about fruit. A lot of times that we talk about friends in our friend groups, we talk about understanding friends, but we don't talk about fruit. Somebody say fruit. I can't talk about friends without talking about fruit. And a lot of you are frustrated with your friendships because you don't see friends as fruit. I'm working in here. You're frustrated with your friendship because you don't see friends as fruit. But if you see friends as fruit, then you won't, you'll be less frustrated with your friendships. Can I help you right here? Can I help you? Are y'all good? Yeah. All right. Y'all want to sing some more or something? Y'all okay? Okay. I just want to make sure. Okay. Uh, verse 12 says this. I want to go back because I want to help you. I want to help you right here. Verse 12 says this. Let's put verse 12 up. Can we do that? Thank you. Thank you, Corinne. Okay, can y'all give it up for Corinne, man? She works. She's my partner in this. Y'all just don't know how unprepared I be sometimes. No, I'm just kidding. 
I'm not unprepared in my heart or in my mind, but I just don't give her what I'm thinking. <laughs> so we got to work on the fly, but that's all right. We partners, right, Corinne? She says, she hit me with a thumb up. <laughs> well, I guess that's one finger she could choose. That's what. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Somebody like, what, what kind of church did we step into? Is there a, a real one? A real one? A real one. Um, verse 12 says this. It says, uh, this is what happened. In fact, let's go back to verse 11. Let's jump back to verse 11. Then God said, let the land sprout with vegetation. Somebody say vegetation. Lord Jesus, I will, I'm going to help you today. Let the land sprout with, everybody off but me, please. Everybody off but me. Let the land sprout with vegetation, every sort of seed bearing plant, and trees that grow seed bearing fruit. Somebody say bearing fruit. Yes. Now, some things grow that, that aren't fruit, and some things grow that are fruit. Hmm. It's very interesting. Can we move on? Okay, he says, he says, he says, some things that, that, that some plants that, that bear no fruit and then some plants that bear fruit. These seeds will then produce the kinds of plants and trees from which they came. Not from what you want them to produce. They produced out of the line in which they came. Mm, I'm going to help you. And... That is what happens. Somebody, does that version, your version say that? And, and that is what happened. Go back to 11 real quick. Go back to 11 real quick, uh, Corinne. And, and, and it was so. Somebody say, it was so. It was so, it was so what? It was, it was, that's what happened. Because God said it was going to happen. There were going to be vegetables and seeds. There were going to be uh, seed-like vegetables. Uh, vegetables with seed that we call fruit. Are y'all with me today? Okay, and, and what we want to do is be able to be a fruit inspector because we have dominion over all the fruit. Are y'all with me? We want to be a fruit inspector because we have dominion over all the fruit. So when God said you need to look at your relationships, he relates those relationships to fruit. In the book of John, it says this, you will know them by their fruit. Don't expect a good tree to produce bad fruit. Don't expect a bad tree. Oh. It's all good when you're talking horticulturally. It starts to hurt when you're talking about your friends. Because a lot of times in our friend groups, we are expecting that bad trees will produce good fruit. I know, I know it's tight, but it's right. It's tight, but it's right. And we, and we expect that bad trees will produce good, good fruit even though they keep showing you over and over and over again that they're a bad tree. You wonder why you're frustrated. You wonder why you're mad because you're expecting apples from an orange tree. You want you don't get in the who who in their right mind will get mad at an orange tree because it produces uh excuse me get mad at an apple tree because it produces oranges. You wouldn't get mad at it. You'll say, "Well, this is not apple tree. Clearly, I'm not good at picking trees because I keep standing in front of this orange tree expecting apples." Sometimes, 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 sometimes we are, we create our own frustrations. Can I help you right here? Sometimes we create our own frustrations. We do things, we expect things from people who cannot produce what we expect them to produce. And, and instead of saying, no, that person does not have it and, and therefore cannot reach my expectation, that you just get frustrated. But that's sort of insane, Right? I don't want to get frustrated by people who can't reach my expectation. What I want to be able to do is, 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 is change my expectation. So I got to think about who I allow access into my life. Are y'all with me today? I got to think about who I'm giving access to my life because, because um, um, some people need limitations. Somebody say limitation. 
I got to have the relationship with some people where they need limitation in my life. It's not that, it's not that I want to put them out of my life or completely put them out of my life, but sometimes I just got to give them limitations and boundaries and borders and, and speed limits on how far to go and how fast to go. And, and I got to be able to do that. But if I don't know what they are for me, then I can't teach it to anybody else. Does that make sense? So I got to be able to tell you, oh, no, 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 that's, let's not do that. Let's not go that way. Let's not let's uh, let's let's make sure that we before before I turn my limitation into elimination. Are y'all with me? I got to make sure that I got I got to I got to create the right borders and boundaries. I got to be able to say no 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 you can't call me this late. Y'all don't want to hear me when I'm preaching real good. No 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 I don't I don't answer it and and sometimes you don't even have to say it. It's how you respond. That lets people know that they're outside of the boundary of, I got a bad habit. Can I, can I tell you what you're about? I learned it from one of my friends, and now I got a bad habit. I got a bad habit that if somebody, uh, huh, how do I say this? If, if somebody uh, sends me a message without the due honor and respect <laughs> uh, that I believe the message should have for who it's addressed to, I don't respond. That's just real. It's not, you know, who do he think he is? I don't know. Who do you think you are? <laughs> I, need, I, don't, I just don't have to respond. I don't have to respond. What I, listen, let me help you right here. How you respond determines what you allow. How you respond determines what you allow. And when somebody uh, uh, speaks to you in a way that's not relative to the person who they addressed it to, then by me responding in a way, even to say uh, I'm upset about this, it, it, it lets you know that you can have access to me in that way. And that's not good fruit. Are y'all helping me right here? Are y'all understanding? That's not good fruit. That's not good fruit. That's not what I want. That's not what I want you to think that you can get from me. It's like thinking you could get apples from my orange tree. You cannot. Does that make sense? So I'm always, always, always thinking about the fruit that I'm giving, the fruit that I'm giving, the fruit that I'm giving. The Bible says you will know them how? By their fruit. Now, a lot of you are frustrated with somebody else's fruit. Let me help you right here. I'm going to move on. Can I? I'm going to leave right here. This is a message. This message is going to be tough. I'm going to help you though. Uh, see, relationship. <laughs> Fruit is born out of relationship. Okay, does that make sense? Fruit is born out of relationship. All fruit has what? Y'all are so smart, man. Y'all are so smart. And the problem is that some of us, we see vegetation and we call it fruit. We see vegetation. That's a, that's a problem. That's why people are frustrated. You, frust you have a frustration with vegetation. When instead of saying, okay, this is what I should properly expect from this thing, you are saying, well, I expect fruit, I'm getting vegetation, and that causes frustration. But stop expecting something to produce that doesn't have the seed inside it. The Bible says it'll produce after itself. It'll produce after its kind. And when you keep getting nastiness, 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 and then wonder why it's not produced. Why are you getting frustrated? You, it's clearly not the fruit tree that you expected. And so I can't have relationship with vegetation. Does that make sense? Because I'm seed-based, okay? And everything out of me, seed should flow out of me. Does that make sense? Okay, so, so if we're not growing, I'm not going. If we're not growing, if we're not growing together, relationship, re uh, uh, let's talk about this. Ships, ships go places. Ships go places. Where are we going? If we're in a ship together, where are we going? Where does that ship take me? Does that make sense? So if, I, if we're in a ship together and we're just wading in the water, listen, I can swim. <laughs> are y'all with me today? I can swim so I can do, uh, I just told somebody the other day, I, this is the old Mary J. Blige prophet. She said, I could do bad all by myself. I learned that early. I could do bad by myself. So I want to be connected with somebody that's going to help me to do better. That's going to row on their side like I'm rowing on my side. Because if, if I'm rowing and you're not rowing, we're just going in circles, baby. 
Are y'all with me? Okay, so I'm going to make sure that I'm ruined, but I'm also going to be checking. Now, when we get in the right cadence, I don't got to look no more because we, we roll together. See, this is this right here. That's 25 years. It's, I don't got to look. I don't got to inspect it. I already know. We rolling together. I don't got to check no phones or no emails. I don't got to be searching all around. We roll together. After a certain amount of time, we get in a certain pace. Now, early on. Oh, the man got tight right there. Yeah. I, when I got married, it wasn't no cell phone, so you just, she could see on the bill who you called. <laughs> you could lock her out of the bill. That's just, who is a two one zero seven five three? I don't know. Dominique's three. Dominique must have called them. The, Some of y'all confused. It's okay. <laughs> but I got frustration when my expectation is greater than your capacity to love me. Okay. It's greater than your capacity to friend me. My expectation is greater than your capacity. L write these down real quick. Listen, frustration is born out of ex expectation without reciprocation. Frustration is born out of expectation without reciprocation. I'm going to say it one more time. Frustration is born out of expectation with no reciprocation. What does that mean? Well, it means that as much as I give in this relationship, I want to receive. That's just sort of... And when I'm not receiving like I'm giving, I get frustrated. It's just, that's just real. Does that make sense? Okay, okay, let me give you another one. You ready? Frustration is born out of expectation with no evaluation. Oh. Frustration is born out of expectation with no evaluation. Well, well, what's, that? what's that mean? Well, you inspect what you expect. You got to be able to look at your friend groups, look at your relationships and say, is this, is this, is this a life-giving thing for me? Is this a life-giving thing for me, or is it, making, is it pulling me down? There's some relationships, they just drain you. Oh, Lord, let me help you. There's some relationships that just drain you. They're just draining. I mean, it don't matter what you do. It's just like, as soon as you see their name on the... I know y'all don't want to talk about it, but it's a safe space. This is a safe space right here. This is a safe space. <laughs> you see the name, and you're like, Lord Jesus, just give me the strength to just... I just need, I mean, I want to have this conversation, but it's, it's giving me the strength to. You got to be able to evaluate. Now, is this a life-giving thing for me? Is this a life-giving thing for me? Or, 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 and I'll, I'll get to this in a second. Or is God using me in such a way that I'm supposed to sow into them? Is God using me in such a way that I'm supposed to give into them? And I can't expect them to give into me. I'm just called to give into them. There are some people, oh Lord, I'm y'all preaching me too fast. There are some people in your life that are assignments for you. Lord have mercy and you keep expecting them to be associates when the truth is they're just assignments but I got to evaluate it look at somebody and say you got to evaluate it okay okay frustration is born out of what what's the first one see y'all didn't write no notes that's why y'all you're going to be sitting in my office Six months from now, I just don't understand. You need to take a note. <laughs> Number one, say it again. That's good enough. That's good. Let's go. Call one of them. Call one of them when you. <laughs> Here we go. Number two, come on. Beautiful. Okay, here's the third one. You ready for this? Frustration. Is born out of unsuccessful manipulation. 
Frustration is born out of unsuccessful manipulation. I find this more in the church than I find it anywhere else. I find this more in the church. People are mad because they can't successfully manipulate you. They mad at you because their manipulation tactic on you didn't work. That's it, that, why you mad at me? I'm you. I told you I couldn't do it. I told you I could. I told you I didn't have the capacity for it. I told you in the beginning. Making me feel bad is not gonna help your cause. Is this too deep for y'all? Y'all wanna? We, we can sing a church song. Where the, where the Need the organ player back. <laughs> Are y'all with me today? You know where else I find this? Oh, I'm going to get in trouble. You know where else I find this? In uh, single ladies. Trying to make some dude fit into the mold of what you think he should look. No, he's showing you, he's showing you, he's showing you, he's showing you. Stop trying to cross-pollinate. Stop trying to make him bear some fruit. That he's showing you, he's showing you, he's showing you. I just believe if I just keep praying for him, you know, I just get, no, 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 no. You're going to be frustrated. Unsuccessful manipulation. You can't, you can't, uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, uh. You can't buy him enough. You can't give him enough. I'm trying to help somebody. You can't do it. It is what it is. It's, it's, that's it. <laughs> Unsuccessful manipulation. You have friends. You have friends. Some of y'all are laughing, but you, you have people you try to manipulate into certain situations, make them fit into certain little boxes, and then you get frustrated because they don't fit in that box. Stop getting frustrated. Listen, listen. Glory in what they give. Glory in what they have. Glory in what they already give. Let me help you. I... I, I tell this to my wife a lot. She, I've been saying this for 25 years. She turned around to me in the closet the other day and she said, you know what? You was right. I, just, I said, take me now, Lord. I'm ready. I've been waiting all my life. To... She filled my love tank. She said, you was right. I said, oh, Lord, I don't even know what we were talking about, but thank you, Jesus. Even a broke clock right twice a day. She said, you was right. She said, I expect too much from them. And it leaves me frustrated. I said, oh, yeah, no, that's right. No, that's right. Expectation and capacity. What they have to give is, is less than what you need to be fulfilled. What they have to give, what you have, your, your need is greater than what they have to give. That's why you got to stop going to resources and you need to go to the source. The source is Jesus. I know the source. I don't have to go to a resource. I go back to the source. The source will fill me. The source will heal me. The source will change me. I don't need, I don't need you to fill me up. I don't need you to make me happy. Ooh, Jesus. Am I helping today? So this is a hard lesson right here. Oh, just in case you didn't know, the, the title of this message is The Frustration with Friendship. Okay, all right. <laughs> but I want to teach it from this perspective that the fruit of your expectation is too great. Fruit of your expectation is too great. And oftentimes you are angry and you are upset, but it's of your own doing. Because it's too, it's too great. I, 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 you know how I love people. You know how I serve people. Whatever they could give, I'm, boy, I'm head over heels. I'm so happy. When somebody just come to church twice a month, <laughs> I'm no shots, no shots. This is not, no, I don't have, I'm, I'm not that petty. I'm petty, but not that petty. Okay. <laughs> Start the car, man. It's time to go. <laughs> no, for real. Some people I see, and I haven't seen you in a month of Sundays. I'm like, yo, I'm so happy to see you. I'm not faking. I'm not, I, I'm accurately happy to see you. And then there's people who come here every single Sunday and they skip one Sunday and I'm like, yo, where was you? <laughs> Expectation and capacity. 
Whenever somebody gives me a, a, a gift, they honor me in some kind of way, just a small message or whatever, I'm blown away. Thank you, Jesus. I, I didn't expect that. A lot of us, we're upset and angry because we've created these expectations for people. We've made them. You know what a disappointment is? It's an appointment you made that they dissed. It's an appointment that you made that they didn't achieve or they didn't step up to. So you got to stop making so many appointments. Lower your expectation. And all of a sudden, you can count more things as love. They did it because they love me. Thank you, Jesus. They love me. They did this one little thing. They love me. I'm appreciative of this one little thing. Does that make sense? But if you don't, you're going to be frustrated. Somebody say frustrated. frustrated. Okay, okay. Manipulation without ministry is manic. Manipulation without ministry is manic. What's that mean? I'll say it in a different way, and you'll get it, I'm sure. Trying to correct people who don't have Christ is crazy. Trying to correct people who, not, who don't have Christ is crazy. It's insane. It's insane because you, your expectation is related to something that, that y'all didn't even agree on. That's why I was going to pick this up. This is not an actual Bible. I know we haven't seen that. This is not an actual Bible. But the Bible calls itself, you know what it calls itself? A plumb line. It says, it says, I'm set to this place. And if we, if you're a Christ-like, then we can all look at that place and say, this is the place of my expectation. I can set an expectation right there. If, if we don't believe in Christ, I don't have nothing to measure by. Some of the hardest time is when somebody tries to come to me to get counseling and then they say they don't believe in God. Well, champ, I, I don't know what to tell you. We don't, I don't know what's right. I don't know what's wrong. He cheating on me. What's cheating? Y'all don't believe in the Bible. Y'all don't believe in God. What's cheating? He just being a man. She just being a woman. She just doing what's in her nature. Because you don't have a plumb line. Because you don't have anything to live your life by. To set a standard to. Now if we all are Christ like. I can come to you and say no no no. This is the standard. Ephesians 5 is the standard. Husbands love your wife as Christ loved the church. And died. And that's the standard. If we don't believe in Christ, we don't have a standard. It's just kind of like how you feel. Well, well, that was wrong to me. Well, it wasn't wrong to me. And I'm just sitting there like, yep. And it's 45 minutes left in this session. You need to inspect the fruit of those relationships. So y'all, are y'all good? Okay, okay, okay. So let's move on from there. Okay, so, so. I want to have fruitful relationships. Somebody say fruitful relationships. Fruitful relationships look like life-giving things. Okay? If it's a plastic relationship, then I can't have an expectation from it because it's not real. Okay? It's not, it's not real. It's, 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 it's plastic. Now, I wanted to uh, have a demonstration for y'all, but uh, sometimes these demonstrations, they don't work out. And that's okay, too, right, Kevin? Right, 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 Dub. They just don't work sometimes. Sometimes I come to them, I have a great idea. Okay. <laughs> I need a plastic kumquat. <laughs> sometimes, certainly, sometimes they be like, okay, I know exactly where to get one of those. I don't know how they know, but they just know. <laughs> my, my grandma house. It's a plastic kumquat on the table at my grandma house right now. I'll be right back. <laughs> Sometimes it's not, so that's okay. I mean, you know, it's disappointment. I said, a, okay, no, okay. <laughs> I wanted to show you the difference between plastic fruit and real fruit. Now, I know this because I live with a homemaker. It's been times where she bought some plastic fruit, and I saw it there on the kitchen counter, and I was like, boy, I'm about to tear this apple up. You walk over to that apple, pick it up, realize it's light. I got something wrong with this. It's light. I didn't know it until I touched it. I didn't know until I put my hands on it. That's why sometimes you can't see with your eyes. You got to get up close. You got to get up close enough to get your hands on it and then realize it's not 
waited. I want relationships that are I want relationships that are weighted. I want relationships that are built off something that are strong enough to hold me that when I need help, when I need to lean on somebody, they got to have a certain amount of weight. They have to have been through a certain amount of stuff. And the problem is you keep leaning on plastic people and expecting them to hold you up when God said that if it's not real, it's not right. You can't trust it. You got to inspect it. You're leaning on plastic people. And you're mad because they can't hold you up. They weren't built for that. Built to look cute. This is too hard. I'm, I need to preach some nice. Jesus loved the little children. Red and yellow, black and white. God said, no, no, no. It's got to be real. It's got to be real. If it's real, it's weighted. If it's real, it's weighted. If it's real, it's weighted. It's weighty. You can deal with it. And, that, and, and some of us, again, m- maybe it's us because some of the people in our lives, that, that they're, being in relationship with them is too heavy for you. Some of the people in, in my life, yeah, being in relationship with them. But there are some of the, whew, thank you, Lord Jesus. There are some people that being in relationship with them, it, it, it's, it's hard for me, but but. When it's time for me to need them, I got an anchor. I got a rock. I got something that's weighted on the bottom. I got something that's real and that's weighted on the bottom. And yeah, being in relationship with me is hard. It is hard. You know, it's real hard. But but when you need me, I'm there. When you need me, I'm solid. When you need me, I ain't gonna flake. I ain't gonna talk about your business in front of nobody. Else. Y'all don't. Y'all not ready. Y'all want to have nice church. Uh, you, you need somebody who gonna be a rock, who not gonna tell your secrets, who not gonna talk about you in front of nobody else. And when I, and when they say it to you, you never gonna hear it again. When you say it to them, you never gonna hear it again because they know how to hold on to something because they weighty. I thank God for my weighty friends. Thank God for my weighty friends. There's something about weightiness. Something about weightiness. The weight. The weight. The weight of the word. The weight of the water. The weight. There's something about weightiness. There's something about a a, a heaviness. I want to have a relationship with somebody. Not that makes me heavy, but that I know I can lean on them and they're not going to fall over. They're not going to tumble. The problem with many of us, though, is that we, we... We don't want the friends that we are. We want the friends that we want. But biblically, you don't get what you want. You get what you are. We call this the law of attraction. I attract what I am. If you got nine mean friends, you're not the tenth nice one. (laughs) If you got nine mean friends, you're you're the tenth mean friend. And when people see y'all coming, they be like, there they go. You be like, I'm nicer than all them. Yeah, but you mean still. Because you attract what you are. That's why you got to get in rooms with people who you want to be like. You got to get rooms with people who you want to be like. I have ambition. So you got to, listen, you're, surround yourself with people who reflect what you want to be. Instead of just allowing people to come to you who are like who you are. Does that make sense? The Bible talks about it in this way. I know y'all want me to give y'all some Bible. I'll give it to you. The Bible says that Jesus went to a pool. Jesus went to a pool to, to, to heal a man at a pool. And there, the Bible says that there would be a stirring of the water. Lord have mercy, Jesus. This is like Sunday mornings at church. There's a stirring of the water. And all of us come because we want to get a blessing from the stirring of the water. But the Bible says when they all showed up, there was five porches. And it said that all the people with the same disease would get together on the same porch. Wait, man. Wait, 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 wait. The, he said the liars would get, oh, no. They, he, the lame would get with the lame. The blind would get with the blind. This is real. This really happened. The lame would get with the lame. The blind with the blind. You know what I found out when I saw a pastor in the church? That's real. I don't have to introduce the gospels to the gospels. They find each other. They Facebook friends. I didn't even know how y'all knew each other. Y'all didn't. Do- <laughs> the liars with the liars. 
I'm trying to help. The fornicators with the fornicators. I know, I know. It's tough. It's tight. It's tight. It's tight. It's tight. It's tight. But I, wanna, I don't want to surround myself with people who have the same proclivities that I have. I want to surround myself with people who are going to make me better. That, that's going to cross-pollinate with me. And the, and the good thing that's in me is going to align with the good thing that's in them. And all of a sudden, we're going to produce something that you've never seen before. You know, a raspberry is not real. A raspberry is not. There's no such thing as a raspberry. People are gonna quit this church, man. A raspberry is not a raspberry is not real. A raspberry is a cross pollination of a grape and a strawberry. Yeah, no work. We live in the age of Google. You can Google this. It's real. Like, you know what? My dad didn't have this problem. He could say whatever. The church would just be like, "Amen." Y'all just be like. It's okay. I wouldn't say it to you if, if I knew I was going to fail the Google test. No such thing as a raspberry. But some of y'all love raspberries. But it's because you put the right thing with the other right thing. And they produce something beautiful. They produce something magical. They produce something amazing. And I'm just believing that God's going to put your right fruit with somebody else's right fruit. And all of a sudden, y'all going to produce something. In fact, you can look at your friendship relationships right now and say, no, nah, God put me with the right person. And we produce something beautiful. He put my stuff with her stuff. And all of a sudden, we produce something beautiful. It was no such thing as a raspberry. put the right thing with the right thing and it produced something beautiful I want to get into I want to get into cross pollinative relationships where what's in me is producing something in them and what's in them we talked about John and Jesus just a little while ago we talked about Elizabeth and Mary just a little while ago the Bible says that when Mary walked into a room Elizabeth's baby leap I want to know if you're in relationship with anybody who make your baby leap when you walk into a certain room and all of a sudden when you see them something in you gets happy something in you gets happy something in you jumps up something in you leaps I want to have those kind of relationships, those kind of life-giving relationships. And listen, you lucky if you have three in your whole life. You are lucky if you have three in your whole life. Sit down, y'all making me nervous. Here we go. Here's your three. You ready? Here's your three. Here's the first one. Constituents. 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 Somebody say constituents. What's a constituent, PD? Well, a constituent is somebody who believes in what you believe in. They go in the same direction as you because they believe in what you believe in. They doing it with you because they believe in what you believe in. They partnering with you because they believe in what you believe in. They're the right person because they believe in what you believe in. There's some church relationships that are constituencies. They are the kind of relationship that says we're both going in the same direction. We both doing it together. We stepping together and this is my constituent. They are a friend but I got them in the right category. This is just about categories again, right? We talked about categories before. You need a toilet, you just don't need it in your kitchen. Right? You need a trash can, you just don't need it in your bedroom. Put it in the right place. Access it at the right times. Monday and Wednesday, I got to deal with the trash can. But I can't put it in, okay? Constituencies. Constituencies are the right person at the right time going in the right direction. God will send you constituents, and that's, that's not a problem. That's fine. This is Politicians uh, have constituents. It's the people who want what you want. Who, during the time that you want it, they want it too. And y'all want it together. And the Bible says one could put a thousand to flight and two could put 10,000 to flight. All of a sudden, when we get together, oh, let me help you. We activate our multiplicity. When I get somebody next to me, the Bible says I'm good by, listen, I'm good by myself. I could put a thousand to flight. I got my thousand. Right? 
Okay? But when I put something, something else with it, when I put something else with it, when I put something else with it, all of a sudden, I, I, we can put 10,000 to flight. We can do something so much greater. Does that make sense? Okay, all right. So constituents, constituents are going the same way as me. But now, here's the problem with constituents. When you start going a different way, you lose them. When you start going, y'all used to go to the club together. You say, I don't want to go to the club no more. Well, you got to be okay with losing some constituents. They're still my friends, but they, they're constituents. They're still my friends, they're, you know, friends. But I got to be okay with the fact that I'm changing. Some of y'all, see, some people in your life won't let you change. That's the problem. Some people in your life won't let you change, but you got to be okay with it. You got to be, you got to have the kind of people in your life that will let you change and still walk with you. But, the, but constituents, you got to know that they won't do this. They're not called for that. They're called for y'all both to be walking together at the same speed at the same time. And don't be afraid that when you start making changes in your life, you lose certain people. That's fine. They're, they were constituents in the first place. They were four what you are for, okay? Yeah. Second one, you ready? Yeah. Comrades. They're against what you're against. That's, your, that's y'all's relationship. Truth is, y'all, y'all might not even really like each other, but y'all really don't like her. <laughs> y'all don't really get along, but y'all really don't like Y'all really don't like certain people groups. Y'all really don't like, and I'm just trying to help you. This is real. Y'all really don't like, y'all don't like the Republicans. It's not that you you don't even believe in like what the Democrats believe in, but you're a Democrat by default because you don't like the Republicans. Or (laughs) vice versa. You don't even, you don't believe, you know, you don't even been to church a day in your life. But you say you're a Republican because you don't like the Democrats. That's fine. That means you are a what? A comrade. A comrade. What is, what is a comrade? It's somebody who doesn't like what I, what I don't like. And we, and we find mutuality because we don't like the same things. We don't like Rihanna. We in the, we in the uh, beehive. <laughs> y'all laughing, but y'all take that stuff so seriously. Y'all, did y'all think y'all can't like with this one person because you like this other person? We can't like her. Oh, and it, but the truth is, you have, somebody say comrades. I have certain people in my life that they're only in my life. They're only in my life. Uh, the Bible talks about uh, the, the, the uh, Pharisees and the Sadducees and all, and all these other people uh, who didn't like Jesus. They didn't like each other. They couldn't stand each other. But boy, they couldn't stand Jesus. It was something about Jesus that made them uncomfortable. And the Bible said that they would get together and they would collude because they didn't like Jesus. I'll be careful right here. But there, you know, there's some people who will team up because they don't like you. There's some people that they hold the whole makeup of their relationship is that they don't like you. And that's okay. That's got to be okay with you. But you got to understand that there's certain people in relationship with you. The only reason y'all in a relationship is what? Y'all don't like the same things. Y'all don't like the same things, and that's okay. There's some things, there's some things that I don't like. Right? There's some <laughs> look, y'all don't, y'all, why y'all so negative? There's some things that you just don't like. And there are certain people in your life that the only reason they're in your life is because y'all don't like the same things. When you change your mind, when you change your mind, they they gonna. They out of the relationship. This is why you shouldn't tell your mama that you don't like your boyfriend. Look, see, all the fellas, I was, I, I was coming back, man. I, you was mad at me earlier, but I'm back now. I'm back now. Uh, that's why you shouldn't tell your mama you don't like your boyfriend because she will not like him perpetually. And then when you start back liking him, she won't like you. They don't want to, y'all don't want to talk. When you start back liking him, she won't want because she won't know how to how to deal with you because she thought that y'all were comrades. She thought that y'all was together. Y'all fought together. Y'all talked about it together. Y'all was in the foxhole, like, look at him. 
He make me sick. He make, he, girl, he make me sick too. I told you you shouldn't be with him. Yeah, I know. I shouldn't have. I should have listened to you. I should have listened to you was right, mama. I told you I was right. Because I love you. Don't nobody love you like your mama loved you. You text him, my mama was right about you. A couple weeks later, y'all start mending that thing back together. The problem is she's still mad. She's still mad. She said, remember, we had said, <laughs> remember, we said that we wouldn't, we said, oh man, y'all, are y'all with me today? We said, and then you got to argue, and then you got to argue with your own mama about a feeling that you gave her. When y'all were comrades, when y'all were comrades, what is, what, when you have a constituent, y'all going same direction, same direction for the same thing. Does that make sense? When you have a comrade, you're going in the same direction against a certain thing. But then here's the last one. I'm done. Here it is. It's a confidant. Confidant. See, a confidant is somebody who with you no matter what. They with you. They're just rolling no matter what. It's somebody you can lean on, somebody you can talk to, somebody you can depend on, and they with you no matter what. They even with you when you're crazy. Now, don't get it twisted. They get the right to tell you that you're crazy. And then they get to say, but I'm with you, whatever you want to do. Tabby. They with you when you're crazy. Like, girl, girl, you don't, you don't need to fight them people, but you're going to go to jail. <laughs> All right, the visitors, I'm sorry. Okay, come back next week. I promise it'll be so holy next week. I promise it'll be so holy. We're going to talk about the temple next week. The temple, the temple. She'd be like, girl, you know what? You don't. You shouldn't even be out here. See, we, I told you we shouldn't have came out here. And now, give me some of that. Because we together, no matter what. I used to tell people, you know, I had a little brother. My, I, 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 had a, I have a little brother. He's just not little no more. He, he bigger than me. But when he wasn't big, he had a big mouth. It's good now. He can say whatever he wants to say because he's like 6'5", 300 pounds. What you going to say to him? But when he was 4'5", 95 pounds, he still talked like he talked right now. And people would be like, I'm about to whoop your brother. And part of me would be like, um. <laughs> I disagree. He, sh he shouldn't have said what he said. But you're not about to whoop my brother. Are you crazy? No, I mean, I'm, I'm not his comrade. I'm not his constituent. I'm his confidant. And if he need me, he can call me. Oh, there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And I got into many of fights because of my association with my little brother. It's tough. I won some, I lost some. But you know what they learn? I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to be there. And, and I want to help you right here because at some point, some of y'all have been that for people and haven't had anybody that be that for you. And the, the truth about a, a comfort on is I, I, we need to have mutuality. We need to have reciprocation so there don't be any frustration. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I got I to gotta make sure that I have the right person on my side so that we can go through life together. We can go through battle together. Like I said, you might have three good friends in your life. You might only have one or two confidants. You might only have one or two confidants. 
I want you this weekend, you know what I want you to do? I want you to write your confidant. Text them, tell them, hey, you my guy. You my girl. I'm with you no matter what. I don't want you out here fighting. <laughs> but I got your back. And I'm going to tell you the truth, even if it hurts. Because, because, oh, because I'm going to be authentically me with you. I want to tell you something else. Everybody deserves your authenticity. Not everybody deserves your transparency. You can give people your authenticity. Don't try to give everybody your transparency. Some people, you, you shouldn't tell them the depths of your heart. They're not ready for it. But if you have a confidant, you have somebody you can share with. Tell them the depths of your heart. Tell them your dreams, your passions, your ideas. Each one of us, you need one of those people. And I want you to acknowledge that person in your life this weekend. Can we do that? I know we had fun, we played around. Some of y'all mad at people. You're going to stop being their friend. It's okay. Evaluate those friendships. But at the end of the day, I hope that the, this last thing that you take with yourself is this. Whoever you're getting rid of, make sure you sure up the ones you got. Before you start closing ranks and getting rid of people and throwing them out of your friend groups, and, and make sure you sure up the ones you got. And for those of you guys who are here, 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 here's my part. For those of you guys who are here, you say, I don't have anybody. You know who you got? Jesus. The Bible said there's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And he said, lo, I'm with you always, even into the ends of the earth. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, with every head bowed and every eye closed, we're going to say a quick prayer. And I believe when you say this prayer, you're saved. That's it. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to be anything else. And there is a friend that will stick close to you when everybody walks away, when everybody abandons you. The Bible says when my mother and my father forsake me, it don't say if they forsake me. It says when they forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. There is going to be a season where you feel like you're by yourself. I want to remind you that you're not by yourself, that God is with you. His rod and his staff, they comfort you. And surely goodness and mercy, they follow you all the days of your life. And you can dwell in the house of the Lord forever. If that's you today, you said, I don't know Jesus, but I want to know him now. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Everybody's going to say it so, you don't, so nobody feels alone. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. Change my heart. Come into my life. Change my life. God, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Can we celebrate Jesus all over this place? Come on. Come on. Come on. Can we celebrate the friend that is greater than any other friend? There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. Come on. You can do better than that. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.